what inspired you to write this play? Sure, sure. Um, it was a commission by a theater. It was an open commission. I could write about anything I wanted. Cool. Um, it was North, for Northlight Theater in Skokie, okay. if you know them, outside Chicago. And so it was um, basically up to me what I wanted to write. And I was just sniffing around several things, and I thought it'd be really nice to write something that had – um, some connection to their region, mm. you know, or, or town. And as I was thinking that literally serendipitously, um, there was a review in the New York times about two books that came out about these women, mm. uh, who worked with radium. And, uh, the book that I really liked of those was called deadly glow. Mm. It's like, Oh, that's an interesting subject. You know, <laughs> I was like, I, I connected to it on a very sort of, um, uh, immigrant working class level, I was like, oh, this, it could have been my grandparents, you know, like literally all these women were the children of very recent immigrants. And uh, I really liked it. And then as I read further, I realized a big piece of our, that history took place just outside of Chicago. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And I just so connected to the, to the, to the soul of it and to the importance of it and the relevance of it. Um, and the power, and for me, uh, what I still probably tear up as I talk, is just these humble, humble women who ultimately, their work killed them. Uh, and they were the Davids who took on Goliath. And, and they were shamed, and they were um, ostracized. And the more I read about them, the more real they became, and the more I, I became convinced that this story had to be told, because uh, I find it just perpetually relevant. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah. So yeah, it was really it was a circuitous thing where I just sort of followed my nose and my gut, found the material, found its connection uh, to Chicago, and um, found my connection literally to it. Uh, but it was really a really hard. I think it was the hardest play I've ever written mm. uh, uh, for me to actually. Um, there were a lot of false starts because I had a hard time. I was so humbled by the story, um, and there's some it's one thing to write a piece of theater inspired by your mind, your obsessions, whatever. But when you're looking at the lives sacrificed, um, writing can seem paltry, yeah, and yeah. you know, and um, cynical, or um, I, I just was very nervous about. Uh, showing the right respect, paying the right honor and tribute to them. Uh, so I really struggled with draft after draft after draft. And then the dramaturg who had been on the project got into some archives. I can't remember, maybe at Northwestern University. Mm -hmm. And in the archives was, um, gosh, I can only remember. Like, I think it was a big scrapbook by one of the women, I think, or maybe one of the women's kids, but it was a scrapbook of her life oh, wow. of, paper articles and letters and notes and birthdays and car and like and all of a sudden the world came alive and I it, it helped me cross a line where it was no longer an intellectual exercise um or an assignment and I, it was never an assignment but like an exercise or just a play to really feeling these women and really have having a sense of 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 them in all their dimensions. Mm. And once I saw that, things started to fall into place. But it was a it was a it was years. It was because uh, I was working on so many other plays, I bet it was a four year journey oh, to wow. sort of get it right. And then um, I had a good draft and then I workshopped it with Lee Silverman at um, Baltimore Center Stage. Mm -hmm. And um, there was something about, it was just a four day process, but there was something about it was when I'm sure you've had these experiences with your writers and like, I went home to the hotel every night and reworked huge chunks of it. And the thing just came into focus, but it was a, a humbling, humbling journey. 